Hey guys, it's Armatrix, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to configure your own crosshair. And before we start, I just want to note that there are many different ways you can configure your crosshair. You can do it manually through a crosshair generator like this, or through an, a map, and I'm going to be showing you all three ways. So first of all, let's try it with a crosshair generator. Now I'll leave a link to this particular crosshair generator in the description, but you can just type in crosshair generator in Google for CSGO, and this should be the first one that pops up. Now if you look at this, it gives you a visual representation of what your crosshair that you're configuring is going to look like in actual in-game, and you can choose what map. So you can have parts of Dust 2 on long, or on uh, mid, you can look on Inferno, and Nuke as well. And the way you're going to configure your crosshair from this is with these sliders here. So this adjusts how much alpha is in your crosshair, which is basically its opacity, pretty much. This one controls your thickness, it's pretty self-explanatory, of course. And this one controls size, which is the length of the four lines. This one, of course, gap. This one is the outline. This one only works with a particular style of crosshair, though. And anyway, this is how you change your crosshair. You can also make it a dynamic crosshair like this, which will adjust depending on how you're looking at an enemy, if you're moving or not. You can also include a dot on your crosshair, or whatever you want. So, personally, I prefer a crosshair that is quite thick, but isn't too large in size, and has quite a small gap. So, something like that would do me quite well or even something that's just a dot, pretty much, would do very well. If we go to the default crosshair, this one is only editable by the size, as this is the default CSGO crosshair, and it's supposed to not be editable, but you can see that you can change the gap on it, and that's it. So anyway, once, you've, once you're done configuring your own crosshair here, you can copy the config, which is down here. So um, once, you get, once you've configured your whole crosshair, even if you use a preset like this, or a player preset like Exist, then just copy the crosshair config here, then you'll want to launch your game, so if we launch Counter-Strike Global Offensive now, and your game should load up, and you will need to open the developer console in-game, and this can be done by pressing the key on the top right of your keyboard next to one on the left of one that should open up open it up or you could assign it a different key but make sure you have developer console enabled first so if you go into game settings find enable developer console and hit yes so make sure that's on yes and the default bind should be the key next to one on the left so i've changed my bind to colon anyway because i find that easier and once you've opened your developer console, make sure you paste it in, hit enter, and then join whatever you want, and you should have your new crosshair. An alternative way of having a custom crosshair is if you use a crosshair map, such as Crash's crosshair map. So if you find that one now, and that is a workshop map, of course, you can find it on the workshop if you type in crosshair generator, and it is his own map. So if we load up his map now, it has different options around it, which are the same thing really. All it does is change the different configs, it's just like the crosshair generator you saw online. But this one is a crosshair map, and it's more visual and easier to configure if you're new to this. It won't give you max editability of course, but it does give you basic stuff that you can do, especially, it's particularly useful if you're new to this kind of thing. So if we're on the map right now, you can see my default crosshair which is this dot. I'm not sure if you can see it on YouTube, but it's probably really small. And if you hit this, you can change what style of crosshair you're using. So, uh, number one should be the default crosshair. Yep, that is default. And you can have a fixed gap, such as this or that. Number two is the classic crosshair. And you can have any style of outline. Number three, I think, is the most editable type, but it's also a dynamic crosshair. Not sure, I'm not so sure about number 4 and 5, but these are static, as I'm sure. 
So you can choose an outline, a gap, pretty much anything you want from here. You can also choose from a set of three edited colors. So there's all these colors you can choose from. The colors that I think stand out the best are probably this red, this green, and even some of the more luminescent pinks, and this kind of blue. The blue doesn't stand out that great on Nuke though, as it does blend in with the wall colors, but on other maps it should stand out pretty well. You can also change it here as well. And if we go back here, you can restore the crosshair that you just had if you preferred it. Or you can save whatever you want. You can go to the default crosshair before you start, of course, I've got to mention that. This is the default one, and a lot of pro players use something very similar to this, but static crosshairs, of course, so that would be 4 or 5, which are both static crosshairs. And both customizable, of course. You can choose the outline you have, and anything you want from there as well. Something like this is pretty useful, as it has quite a large outline as well. And that's pretty much it. I'm just going to restore my old crosshair, and that is how you use Crash's crosshair map. Of course, you can compare it to different places in a real map. This is a simulation of what Logma on Dust 2 would look like. Now, if we move on to our final method of changing crosshair, we have the manual method, so we'll need to go through every single different crosshair command for this. So the first one, of course, is CL underscore crosshair style and this one is the one that configures whether you have the default crosshair which is this or this which is the crosshair that you will be familiar if you played other versions of CS or this other dynamic crosshair or the other two static crosshairs which are 4 and 5 which are both static and the other one we can go do is crosshair dot, cl underscore crosshair dot, which says whether you include or not include a crosshair dot. There's cl underscore crosshair color, which determines the different color types you have for your crosshair. You can adjust the amount of blue, the amount of green, or the amount of red with underscore b, underscore g, or underscore r. And then the other one you have is cl underscore crosshair use alpha which means whether you want to include its opacity pretty much and then there's cl underscore crosshair alpha itself which adjusts the alpha level on your crosshair then there's cl underscore crosshair size which represents the size of the crosshair there's also crosshair thickness and then you put whatever number in if you want for thickness. And finally, there is CL underscore crosshair gap, which represents how large the gap gap is. Mine's currently minus five because mine's just a dot, so everything is pretty much all together here, which means it has a black outline and a pink uh, line. So if I made the gap a bit wider, it would look normal with pink lines and a black outline across it. So that's it for this video, and that is how you configure a crosshair. So make sure that you experiment with this a lot to see what works for you best. Sometimes pro player ones will work good for you, or you may need something different that suits your playstyle. A lot of players tend to go for crosshairs that help get headshots, so something like a crosshair with a gap in the middle, so you can actually line up a headshot, or a dot like this which you place on an enemy player's head, and you shoot to get the headshot there or something similar to that which helps a lot in CSGO. So thanks for watching this video, and I hope this helped you out. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it, and as always, if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe.